Good morning. You're muted right now, so I can't hear you. So I appreciate the wave. <laughs> so far, it's just us. I'm super excited to be back hey. doing the bugs because <laughs> Lily's had a Zoom at 1020 every day. Oh no. 10 minutes. But it got changed and now she Zooms at 10 o'clock. Woot! Yay, that's happy news. I'm so <laughs> glad you're back. We've been I missing you. Find flowers at the bottom. Ooh. Yeah, she's already contemplating her, her next art project. So. Oh, fabulous. You always got to have ideas cooking in the background. You never know when they might come in handy. Do you have an art journal? Do you have an art journal? Think no. about that. I do have a journal-ish that I don't really use. You could totally turn it into an art journal. Okay. I think she's going to do that now. Taylor, do you <laughs> know? Uh, Perfect. No, I know because okay. I need to pick this one Maybe I should just go with my one piece, or should I do one bikini? And if so, which bottom? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Miss Erin, get wait until you see this notebook. Oh I'm boy. Whoa! That is some fancy, fancy notebooker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just that is perfect. So you know how you said you had all those ideas percolating in your brain? That art journal is the perfect place to keep them until you're ready to turn them into something else. You just sketch them in your, in your art journal or maybe write down your idea. You don't even have to draw anything. Just write it down so that it's there the next time you are thinking about, I want to do something artsy today. You just open your journal and go, oh yeah, that idea was really cool. I'm going to do that today. It's also a really good place to practice stuff. So you can use your art journal to practice drawing things if you're not really confident yet. Like today we're gonna to be drawing butterflies. So if you're not really confident drawing butterflies yet, you can use your art journal and practice. Figure out if you like them or change them. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. How's everybody today? Good. And I have an idea. Already? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, awesome. I, I think that clean, you could draw a fly a pretty good butterfly by just drawing two bees, one the right way, one the other way. <laughs> That's, <laughs> way didn't say That's like a this. really good way to do That's a butterfly. That's why they didn't say off. That's why they didn't say off. Um, one that so chatty, I love that. Piss. And for Daniel, that's right time. No, leave it in there. For Low time. Good hey, Miss Laura, thanks for that's joining us. And for Daniel, that's time. <laughs> We're going to wait just another moment to see if we get anybody <laughs> else to join us today. Um Miss Alicia from the Hiawatha Library is running a little bit late, so she says she's very sorry she misses everybody, but hopefully she'll be able to join us in a little while. And Miss Laura's here from the Marion Public Library. Hi, Miss Laura. And then we may or may not have um, somebody from North Liberty. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. It's one of those days where we don't know what's going to happen. And isn't that the best kind of day? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Like I said, we're going to wait another moment or two just in case there's somebody else joining us that's running a little bit late. Hello, everyone from the White House. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, there's Miss Emily from North Liberty joining us. Aha! We do have someone. Good morning, Miss Emily. <laughs> Everyone says hello. Hello. 
We're excited. We have Miss Lily back. She used to come to our North Liberty classes a lot, and she said she's had other stuff scheduled for the same time as Doodlebugs all this time. And finally, she can help. She can join us. We see some other faces I've seen before. Yay. Okay, so while we wait, make sure that you have everything you're going to need. So first, I like to have a pencil and a piece of paper. It's just very nice to have around so you can sketch out what you might want to do before you commit with markers, because markers you can't erase. Then you're going to need a plastic zippy bag. I got a great big one. You might have a smaller one. All of my small ones have Halloween decorations on them, so I didn't want to use that. <laughs> and some permanent markers. I know these are sometimes not the best thing because I know they're not washable. Plus they smell really bad. It's not very good. But these are the only kind of markers that will work on this. You can't use washable markers on plastic or it just wipes right off. Now, if you have all of that stuff, you're good to go. But what you may also want are some regular markers, washable markers if you want, or colored paper, or anything around the house that's colorful, but you don't need it. And I'll show you in a little while what that's for. So I thought first, if we have everybody, I don't think there's anybody else joining us at the moment. So we'll go ahead and get started. First, wave at me if you have been to the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art. Anybody? I've been there. I work there. <laughs> if you haven't been to the Museum of Art, go check it out. It is so cool because especially right now, we have artwork up on display by an artist named Grant Wood. And if you were with us last month, you may remember Grant Wood from his most famous painting. It's the one with the man standing next to the woman and he's holding a pitchfork and he's wearing overalls and she's wearing an apron. They're standing in front of a house in the background with a big tall window. It's called American Gothic. That one is the most famous thing he's ever made. However, he also made a boatload of other stuff and not just paintings. He drew with crayons, just like you and me. He used um, pastels, which is kind of like a cross between a crayon and chalk. He used ink, like in a pen. He also made sculptures and what we are gonna talk about today, stained glass. Has anybody ever seen a stained glass window? Oh, there's American Gothic. Thank you, Miss Lara. Mm -hmm. So stained glass, the, the most common use we see anymore is usually in churches. They make those windows with the big colorful pictures. They're all made out of little pieces of colored glass. They're pretty awesome, and they usually tell a story, which is kind of awesome, too, because that's what Grant's window does. So if you want, I can show you a picture of Grant's stained glass window. Are you ready? All right, I'm going to share my screen, so give me just a moment. All right, so I believe, oh, yep, my function buttons are not working, so we'll just do it this way. All right, so Grant Wood's stained glass. Now, if you've been to Cedar Rapids before, you may have driven past this building. This is the Veterans Memorial Coliseum in downtown Cedar Rapids. It is actually in the middle of the river. 
in the middle of downtown Cedar Rapids. Now you can see all those windows. That building is very big. But if you see along the bottom of the building, that big rounded topped window is actually the one that Grant created. Look how big it is compared to all the regular size windows. And that's what it looks like from the inside. It's amazing. Now, you can't really tell from looking at it like this, but when you're standing in front of it, do you see the soldiers along the bottom of the window? All those soldiers are life size. They're the same size as a real human being. So that window is real big. So this is the building when they were starting to uh, build it. And somebody in town asked Grant Wood, hey, we would love a stained glass window for the front of our building that kind of pays tribute to all of our veterans. Would you design something for us? And he's never done that before, but he said, sure, okay, I'll give it a try. So this is where he started. These are some um, old, old, old works of art that were kind of based on Bible stories. So if you see in the middle, there's Mary and she's got her cloak, her, her draped garment, her cape. Um, she's kind of spreading it out from her shoulders so that she can shelter people underneath her cape. And this, the drawing that you see on the other side, that is Grant kind of sketching out a similar idea. He's thinking, hmm, I kind of like that idea. Maybe I can think of an idea where um, there's somebody sheltering our veterans. So this is him in his art journal or his sketchbook, trying to figure out how he wants it to look. So he's done a bunch of different versions. And if you're into um, math and numbers, the picture on the left side is all of his numbers. He's trying to figure out how to turn the years of the uh, wars that America had fought in, the years that veterans had been fighting in wars, turning them into um, Roman numerals. But, and this is for the grown-ups, you, if you're familiar with Roman numerals, the ones that Grant wrote in his book and the ones that are in the final glass window, they're actually wrong. He wrote them wrong because he liked how these fit, how they looked better than if they were written correctly. So just a little artistic license there. Grant's like, mm, I know what it's supposed to be, but I like this better. So this is his sketch. He came up with this idea first and you can tell it's got a lot of stuff going on and a lot of little bits and pieces. And those numbers that are across the very, very bottom underneath the soldiers, those are about to change to those Roman numeral numbers. But he thought, mm, still needs some work. So he and his assistant are here on the top of a ladder because it's so big, trying to figure out mm, maybe this piece or that piece needs to change. And each piece has to go in perfectly. So this is what we call the cartoon. When you make a stained glass and you draw out your ideas first on paper, for some reason, they don't call it a drawing. When it's a stained glass window, they call it a cartoon. So this is the cartoon parts of it from Grant's window. And you can see on some of it, he colored it in himself with crayons so that the people who were actually cutting the glass pieces out for him knew which colors to make them. And on the other side, you can see he just put a little dab of color in each place so that they knew which color glass to use for those pieces. He also drew on them, wrote on them, so that they could use the right colors to cut out. So. There's a whole long story, but essentially he went to the best stained glass people in the whole wide world. And at that time, those people lived in Germany. So he had to figure out how to write the color words that he wanted to use in German. So all of these words you see on here are actually in German. Wow. So Schall means steel, Holtz means wood. The W at the bottom there that he crossed out probably stood for vice or white. 
And there's some more. There's Weiss again for white and Rot meaning red and Stahl meaning steel. Just imagine how many of these little pieces go into one window. So when a person makes stained glass windows, I'm gonna start over again, whoops. So you have to do your sketch first and then cut the pieces out and they have to be labeled so they're, they're the right colors. And then, whoa, <laughs> that's not working properly. Anyway, you have to trace all of your cartoon pieces, your paper pieces onto glass. And then you have to cut the glass, which is tricky because glass breaks really easily. And sometimes if you cut it, it doesn't break where you want it to break. Then if you want to, you can actually paint onto the colored glass too. And then you have to stick them all together and it's very complicated, but you're basically melting metal to stick the pieces of glass together. And then you have to make sure they all fit into the window because there's a hole in a wall somewhere that has to fit the window. It's a long process, it's a lot of work. So imagine to create this piece, it's a lot of work. It was a lot of pieces of glass, a lot of metal, and a lot of time. So this is what it looks like when you're in the room with it in Veterans Memorial Building. It is very, very large, 24 feet high altogether. And here's a little close up of some of the faces that he painted onto the soldiers, or onto the glass rather, to make them look like the soldiers. He also painted onto their, their outfits, the uniforms they're wearing to make them look more realistic. So it's not all glass, it's also painting. There's some more pieces. So if anybody is interested, we have coloring sheets of some of these soldiers, pieces of the stained glass window on our website. And I'll show you where to find those later. You can download the coloring sheets and turn them into stained glass windows for yourself. So this is the building. This is Veterans Memorial Building. You, do you see the, the tall arched window? Okay. So you can see that it's on the river. I told you it's, on, it's in the middle of the river in Cedar Rapids. Well, in 2008, we had a flood and the water came way up above the bridges. So there's our building again. And that's what it looked like when it flooded. So the water came all the way up to Grant's stained glass window. So this is what it looked like when the water came back down it left a whole bunch of sludgy mud grossness in the lobby next to the window. And the water got up inside the walls, which means it got up into the window too. And it got really dirty. And because it was also summer when that happened, it started to get moldy and they were afraid that the window was gonna be ruined. So they had experts come in and take each piece of glass out of the window and then they cleaned it. They made sure that they didn't accidentally take off any of Grant's paint and then they put it back. So now it looks brand new again. It's amazing. I am very impressed with all the work they did. So here's the stained glass window and where to find it. You can also Google it. Just Google Grant Wood's stained glass window and you'll find it. But you can also go check it out if you happen to be in Cedar Rapids. If the VETS building is open to the public, then you can go in and check it out. It's right in the first room that you walk into in the lobby. And we have a bunch more Grant Wood stuff at the Museum of Art and the Grant Wood Studio. So you can come check that out too. Now, let's erase that. I thought, let's see, let's stop share. There we go. I thought I could show you a book today. It's not about stained glass exactly, but it kind of works like stained glass. 
It's called Glass Wings. This is actually about a butterfly whose wings are see-through and they kind of work like stained glass. This is by Elisa Clevin. So if you happen to stop by the library, I bet they have a copy of it. All right. So at the very beginning, it shows you these are real life glass wing butterflies, what they look like, and then her drawing for the book. Now, Claire was a glass wing butterfly. Her wings, as clear as windows, let the world shine through. Do you see the sun and the rainbow shining through her wings? This book is so pretty. I like being flowery best, Claire thought. I love being here with my flowery mother and father and brothers and sisters in our bright blooming home. But one day while Claire was chasing a wisp of milkweed silk, a sudden wind swept her up. There's her with her family and all the flowers. Uh-oh, she's getting swept away by the wind. Claire, we can't see you, her family called. Here I am, said Claire, but she was lost in the swirling clouds. On and on she tumbled, scared and lonely. Finally, the wind let her go. It's really bright in here. Sorry, I'm trying to find a non-shiny picture for you to see. That doesn't look like her flowers anymore, does it? Mm. She fluttered down to a strange new world, a city of concrete and corners. I hope I'll find some flowers here, Claire said hungrily, and I hope that my family will find me. See, there's all the concrete and corners. How would anyone find you, asked a pigeon. You're almost invisible. Your wings are as gray as the sidewalk, a ladybug added. As plain as the air, said an ant. Are you a ghost? Of course not, said Claire. I'm a glass wing butterfly. My wings can be any color at all. Look. Claire looked for a spot of color. Up above, she saw three big ones lined up in a row. Oh, said the ladybug. You're as red as me now. And now you're as yellow as a taxi, cried the pigeon. And now you're as green as a soda can, the ant exclaimed. Are you a magic butterfly? I wish, said Claire, I'd fly right home, but I don't know the way. Hmm. Stay here with us then, the pigeon suggested. No butterflies ever visit, said the ladybug. They just pass overhead on their way somewhere else. Would you like something to eat? Asked the ant, offering Claire a tortilla crumb. Thanks, but I only eat nectar, said Claire, from flowers. Flowers, asked the pigeon. What are flowers? Asked the ant. I know what flowers are, said the ladybug, flapping her wings. I ate some tasty aphids on some flowers just this morning. Follow me. I'll show you. Mm. There we go. There's the little guys talking to her. Where do you think they might find flowers in the middle of the city? The ladybug led them to an empty lot where a few flowers grew. They were dusty and scraggly, nothing like the lush flowers back home, but they swayed a little in the breeze and offered Claire their nectar. And as she drank it, 
Claire felt more like her old self again. There's the garden. And there's Claire. Day after day, Claire fluttered among the flowers, sipping their nectar, carrying their sticky yellow pollen from plant to plant, helping new flowers to grow. Her new friends helped the flowers too. The ladybug kept them free of pests. The ant stirred up the soil they grew in. The pigeon scattered their seeds this way and that. Isn't it cool how you can see the flowers through her wings like that? She looks a little like a stained glass window. And Claire was happy with everything growing and gathering around her. But at night, she dreamed of her family far away. Her wing has a bird in it this time. One morning, the pigeon told Claire, look how many flowers have grown since you've been here with us. Like magic, said the ant. And look at your wings, admired the, butterf or the ladybug. Look, look, said a voice in the sky. Claire looked. Hmm. A family of glass wings was fluttering near. Look at that big patch of color, they cried. Look at that flowery butterfly. She looks just like our Claire. We've been looking for you. Look at all the glass wings. So many butterflies. Here I am, said Claire, with my friends. The butterflies waved their wings. They spun and swooped through the sky, changing from blue to gold to purple pink. Starry as the night, sparkly as the city lights. There we go. And then when it turns to nighttime, they all sparkle. So pretty, right? I know. Bright as the butterfly garden they all make together each day. There we go. So cool. So that is how we're gonna make our stained glass today. Are you ready? Okay, so grab your pieces of paper and your pencil or a marker. Now, like I said before, I am using a great big zippy bag, really big. But if yours is a different size, that'll still work. The biggest thing to do when you grab your piece of paper is make sure that part of it will fit if you put it inside your zippy bag. So what I did was I measured, let's see, and my zippy bag is just a little too small to fit my whole piece of paper in it. You see that? So what I did was I just drew a line on the corner of my paper so I knew not to use that part because it won't fit. And then, I drew a big old outline of a butterfly. You can make whatever shape or size a butterfly you want, but draw it on your piece of paper first. I did mine in marker so that you could see it better on my screen, but you can use a pencil if you want to. Now, when you have your butterfly drawn, or if you want, like in our story, there were a bunch of glass wings on some of those pages, so you can draw a whole bunch of butterflies if you want to. But once you have that drawn, then you're just gonna take your baggie. Now, I should point this out. My baggie has 
writing on the front of it on one side, but not on the other. So I'm going to use the side with no writing. That side. I'm going to put it right on top of this so that I can see my butterfly through the plastic. And then I'm just going to take my permanent marker. It's important to use a permanent one for this, like I said, because the washable ones will wipe right off. I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to trace the butterfly. It's so shiny in here, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm going to trace the line that I drew on my paper right onto the plastic. Okay, so if you have your baggie ready and your butterfly is all ready to go, go ahead and trace so that you'll have a butterfly on your plastic baggie. Okay, I'm going to do mine really fast. Okay, so here's my baggie. Can you see my butterfly on there now? If you want to, now you can add, you know, like if your butterfly needs a body, I'm just going to draw it in with my Sharpie marker here and color it in. I don't like to use the Sharpies very much because it gets stinky in here. So I'm just gonna use a little bit, but he does, my butterfly does need a body. Okay, there. Now she has antennae and a body, but it's still see-through. See that? Now, here's the fun part. You can take an extra blank piece of paper and just doodle all sorts of colors on it. You can use colored paper or this paper that has paint splatters and marks all over it. I have lots of this. Or, I just happen to have a leftover bag full of colorful feathers. Don't ask, I don't know why. It's from a long time ago and I barely remember why I had this. But I can use that to make my butterfly really colorful. Look at that, you guys. I can also use the book that I was reading. See how this book had such pretty colorful pictures? I can just hold that up and all of a sudden my butterfly is really colorful too. So you can even put stuff inside the baggie if you want to. But my favorite thing is just to take a little tiny piece of tape and tape it up to my window so that everything outside my window shines through my butterfly. Can you think of what else you could do to make your butterfly colorful? What else could you do? What if I take my colorful paper and I open up my baggie and I put my paper inside? I can put lots of different pieces in there, in fact. Make my butterfly colorful. How do we make the picture all pretty and stuff? What do you mean? No, like the your butter. Yeah, the paper that goes in, how do we make it prettier? You can draw on a piece of paper and stick it inside your baggie if you want to. You can paint on some paper. This paper that I was using, this colorful paper here, 
this is just regular tissue paper that we had laying around. Yeah. And oh. we just splattered paint on it. Oh, wow. Let's see, wow. This. Tissue paper. Let's see if I can. Wow. Can if you have colorful paper, yeah. you just splattered it with paint. But you can also mm -hmm. take regular paper and paint on that. You can take regular paper and color yeah, on it you can with get markers or crayons or pencils. You can draw with anything you've got around the house. Oh, Miss Lara is saying she has some beads, some colorful craft beads. I bet you could pour those in your baggie too. How fun would that be? Anybody also, have any uh, other ideas? I think one of the ladies in Lisa's um, household had an idea. She was raising her hand. Uh, I oh, was just going to say she you. should go ahead and unmute and say it. Let's see her on the screen now, though. She moved off screen. And um, what I want to show you was I colored brown rice. I colored a piece of paper and stuck it for my, my butterfly. There you go. Oh, I like it. That's very cool. Anybody else have any of their artwork that you want to share with everybody yet? How about you guys at Sheena's house? I see a butterfly. How can you yeah, make that butterfly colorful? She's trying to put something here, put the white behind Oh, it. nice. I like your colorful flowery shorts behind it. <laughs> <laughs> Very I decided cool. that since I had some, some colorful flowers, I, would, I decided that I would do that. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And your stripy shirt would be cool too. Mm -hmm. A stripy butterfly. <laughs> oh my God, hi. Can you show your butterfly, Madeline? Yeah, you can share your butterfly too. You can hold yours up. <laughs> pretty. Very pretty. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Who else has a colorful butterfly you want to show? Anybody? We have so many pretty things happening. Oh, let's see. Everybody at Lisa's house. Look at, oh, you have more than one butterfly. I like it. There's no rule that says you can't have a whole bunch of butterflies. Do you want to show yours again? Sorry, I was trying to unmute myself. Happens, um, yep. <laughs> so, my, so, I have more than one butterfly. This is Claire. Oh, that's Claire. Then some of the other youngers. I like it. Claire with some of her family. Anybody else? We have so many butterflies happening. You want to show it, Pip? Okay, I'll make that stick. Yeah, we just kind of, Hugh just, just showing his bag, but he decided he just wanted to color on the bag, and Miss Gwen has just decided to color on a sheet of paper, so. <laughs> oh, very nice. I'll That'll work, too. If you don't have a plastic baggie at home, guys, for this project, you can actually just use a regular piece of paper because in, when you hold up a regular piece of paper to a window, you can actually pretty much see through it. It'll still be white, but it'll still be kind of see-through-y. So you can color right on a regular piece of paper and stick that in your window too. And if you happen to go to our website to look at, for that coloring page I told you about, you can just print that off on a regular piece of paper, color it out, and then put that in your window. It'll look like a stained glass window. In fact, let me see if I can show you guys where to find that. Let's see. 
<laughs> Where did I put that, you guys? Okay, so on our website, if you go to the events list and look up today's Doodle Bugs class, it's on that page. The first thing you'll see under the title is this page. That is a coloring page that you can download and print off at home. And then you can color it in with markers or whatever you happen to have. And you can tape it up in your window and it'll look just like Grant's window. Now, before we say goodbye to everyone, huh? All right. Anybody want to share with your uh, with, share your artwork with the group before we go? Yes, the folks at the White House house. Anybody want to show us what you got? Maybe. Oh, very nice. That's really pretty. It's beautiful. I can't wait till you put it in your window. It's going to look like it's glowing. I like yours too, Elise. Elise. -E Elise? Elise, I think it is. Yeah, let's take a look. Miss Elise, let's look at yours. <gasps> wow. I like it too. You did a wonderful job filling up that whole space. Nice work. Sister. Hello, sister. <laughs> now, are you going to put that butterfly in a window so you can see all the colors shine through from outside? Oh, it's going to be super cool. Anybody else want to share? So many fun butterflies happening. I love it. Let's see. We got one more. There's another one. Ooh, that's a good idea. Miss Laura says, hold your butterfly up to the sky during sunset. That will be really colorful. Very nice work. I am so excited to see all of these colorful butterflies happening. All right. Anybody else want to share before we say goodbye? <laughs> we have a lot of activity going on. All right. Oh, Miss Elise, right before, right before we say goodbye, let's look at that. Check out that butterfly. Very beautiful. Mom, I made it. Yeah? Oh my gosh, that is so pretty. Is that one with markers or paint or what? Markers. So that didn't take very long at all. Oh. Yes, let's take a look at the White House house again. Mm -hmm. Oh, did we lose you? There we are. Very cool. Like all the colors. Very nice. Okay, so with that, we will say goodbye to everyone. Thank you for joining us today for Doodlebugs. Thank you. It Bye. was so good to see you all. Hopefully, we'll see you again soon. Bye. Nice to see you. So much, Aaron. Thanks. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Bye.